So the World Cup is no longer a dream. Scotland will be in Spain next term. They may have been fighting in the Falkland Islands, queuing in their thousands for jobs at home, but for one manager, 22 footballers and 15,000 supporters, the year of 1982 was all about that time in Spain. From the Costa del Clyde to the Costa del Sol was a journey to be made, the pilgrimage to be undertaken in the cause of Scotland, who, once more, had to be supported evermore. Terrib I'm terribly sorry, we have no tickets whatsoever left. No, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, there's nothing at all. We've had literally hundreds of inquiries. No, there is no other source. <laughs> Unworldly travel agents may have thought that the Scottish football fan needed straight tickets. But the most important team for the World Cup, that had been no problem. The squad from the Glupot Inn, Maybowl in Ayrshire, had already been named. Conn, Milligan and Doherty. Campbell, Harvey and McCullough. Glass, Ferrell, Walker, Conn and McGill. Substitutes to travel, Macmillan and Hamilton. They had paid their subs and had taken the surprising precaution of actually buying tickets. Oh, there's plenty coming, here we go. There's plenty coming, but you better go and wear them. That's a sample, we're starting to sell them anyway. Anybody really interested in buying them? Well, each goes you go? what, 50 Much pounds each. Natural. And I've got so, one for the Brazil game, Russia game, and uh, New Zealand, plus one in Russia and New Zealand. Oh, it should be an important game for Scotland and Russia. And it costs you 50 pounds for every ticket. 50 pounds? You've got a Scottish team for that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a Scotsman going anyway? I'm not getting nothing. The team bus, a double-decker banger of uncertain vintage, had been acquired. They would live in it for three weeks, with no doubts it would last the course and distance to Torrey Molinas. We haven't got a mechanic. It's what I'll need done. I'll not be, you know, a bit minor. I'll not be too serious. So there's, no, there's no problem. We've just had a complete overhaul. It's been away for two weeks there, getting a complete overhaul right. in Kilmarnock. We got it back this morning, and it's nearly completely renewed, the whole engine. Gearbox, clutch. Back end. Back end. Same one, isn't it? Good We've even got a window wiper on the front end now. Bob, is that right? It must have got a Marsden back then, boy. So much for the team and their transport. Now, how would Scotland do in Spain? We'll beat Russia 1-0. And I'll draw away Brazil. And I'll beat that other boy. Quite a lot. I'm very surprised to go over there with the team. He'll do well for the boys. I hope he plays that wee strack. He'll do well for the boys. In front of them, a round trip of 4,000 miles. Fed and watered, elegantly attired for their ambassadorial roles, and each claiming to have at least one spare set of socks. Our World Cup heroes were off on the road to adventure and discovery. Their heroes, Dalgleish and Jordan, Columbus and Marco Polo. Carlisle, Dover, Paris, Perpignan, Malaga, their erratic progress started. We're all going on a summer holiday. No more working for a week or two. Fun and laughter on a summer holiday. No more worries for me. We're going where the sun shines brightly We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true Everybody has a summer holiday Doing things they always wanted to So we're going on a summer holiday To make our dreams come true Two days after leaving Maybole, the temperature had climbed about 30 degrees. 
Ulrike hadn't blown a gasket, and the package deal holidaymakers in this working man's paradise gathered to welcome the do-it-yourself coach tour. Veterans now, they had covered the journey through four countries with the same assurance as they would have caught the ten past nine bus to air. Ah yes, there was another team. They journeyed first class, wore smart new suits and were to be whisked away to a five-star hotel and miss much of the World Cup fun. This was the official World Cup team, highly paid professionals in charge of an unsmiling manager who were not to know the delights of a midnight swim in the Med after a lingering dinner of freshly caught seafood washed down with the dry white wine. was to happen in the days ahead was that this part of Spain, full of concrete hotels and chips with your paella, was to come to know the Scots, not as barbarians with an off license in their hip pocket, but merely very boisterous and outrageously dressed people from the far end of Europe. When one enterprising bar owner announced that his place was to be a Scottish enclave, it became a meeting place for newly lost friends, the Café de la Pay of the Costa del Soca and an early scare when a local terrorist group burned a couple of coaches was shrugged off. While the boys from Maybole admitted that after their journey they needed a couple of hours sleep before entering the fray, by now acclimatised, the advance party sat down to plot strategy. We all beat New Zealand 2 nothing. But there's how we're going to That's beat us. Two the clunch game will be lost. 2 nothing. Depending on Joe Jordan's playing. He's not playing. Against, oh, no, he is, no. He's no playing against his own. You need to get big Joe Jordan in for the, the clunch game against Russia. Yeah. That's going to be the clunch game. How can a man like Evans appear from nowhere three games before the World Cup finals and he suddenly gets a game in the team? You've got McLeish and Miller that have been playing brilliant for years. They did their business for Scotland. They got us through to the finals and they get knocked out. That's terrible. He must, must rate the guy. He can't what he's talking about. Yeah, but it's only the last three games made in the finals. Well, obviously, it's second player. He might add on, I'm the one that's paying the money. If, if we come up with a Russian game and we, we know we've got to win in 90 minutes, we're in the next phase, we know we've got to win, well, Scotland will do it in the last, in the last game. I think this will beat us right enough. Too, too much, too much, too much. No, I think, I think if we're lucky enough, we'll beat Brazil. Nah, we'll not beat Brazil. The green's passed it, Bill. It was not immediately clear as they left for the opening match quite who was supporting who, but now in front of them was only the six miles to La Rosaleda Stadium in Malaga, where Scotland would open against New Zealand. Forgetting what Iran and Peru had done to Scotland four years ago, the supporters' mood was brisk and confident. Scotland would start with a win. This was to be, according to the guru Jock Steen, a World Cup long on perspiration, short on euphoria. That messy business in Argentina had haunted him. Drawn in a section which 